Let's get into it. What a week. Yeah, that's right. Kamala Harris's media blitz continues. On Tuesday, she sat down for an interview with Howard Stern. To kick it off, she made Tim Walz ride a Sibian. And trust me, it got weird. <laughs> I am only telling you that joke because when I saw it, I had to Google Sibian. <laughs> which I realized too late is not some kind of mythological horse. <laughs> Harris also discussed her love of Formula One racing, special case cereal, and going to see U2 at the Sphere. Oh my God, have you been to the Sphere? I, I'm, I'm troubled by it. I, I don't, I, well, let me just say, basically, um, everyone should go in with a, a, a clear head. <laughs> and, you mean and don't be high? Correct. Right. <laughs> you can take the woman out of the prosecutor's office. <laughs> Seeing you two at the Sphere sober couldn't be me. It makes me anxious just thinking about it. This is the biggest man-made object on Earth in which a human being can experience claustrophobia. What is the sphere? Do you see, it needed it to work. Do you see, that's how it was supposed to, do you see how it was supposed to be? <laughs> Halfway through the interview, Stern told Harris that she had his vote. I don't even understand how this election is close. And, and, and uh, yes, I'm voting for you, but I would also vote for that wall over there <laughs> rather than a guy who says he doesn't support Ukraine, wouldn't get on that stage with you and say, I saw Ukraine. This is, and why do my fellow Americans want this kind of chaos uh, overseas? If you would have told me eight years ago that Howard Stern would vote for Kamala Harris because of Ukraine, I would have said, listen to me, I'm not the original Love It. I'm also from the future like you. I was trying to stop Trump, but then I honked at 17-year-old Phineas crossing the street so, that, so now the Barbie movie didn't happen. And then I tried to tell Nancy Pelosi to tell Hillary to go to Wisconsin, but all she did was pump me for info on high cap stocks. But there's still time to stop Trump. There's still time to stop him from being elected. All we have to do is, ah, uh, my heart, no. Tell my mother I got her a magnet on my trip. All right. Then on Wednesday night, Harris cracked open a Miller High Life with Stephen Colbert. But elections, I think, are won on vibes because one of the old saws is, I, they just want somebody they can have a beer with. Uh -huh. So would, would you like to have a beer with me so I can tell people what that's like? <laughs> okay. okay, the last time I had beer was at a baseball game with Doug. So. Okay, so cheers. Okay, there cheers. You there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Wisconsin. champagne of beers. There you go. <laughs> mm. Doug wasn't allowed to have any beer, though. It gives him the zoomies. Uh, <laughs> the last time I had a beer was at a normal time. <laughs> the normal classic beer time. Okay. Later in the interview, when asked about Trump's 2020 election loss, Harris said this. You lost manufacturing. You lost automotive plants. You lost the election. What does that make you? A loser. This is what when somebody at my rally said, I thought it was funny. It's, <laughs> it's accurate. It's accurate. This is what happens when I drink beer. No. <laughs> Same. <laughs> when I have two sips of beer, I always start down my list of, of talking points. Uh, <laughs> just goofy. She's goofy. That's part of it. She's goofy and we love her and that's part of it. Meanwhile, when asked on The View if she would have done anything differently from Biden over the last few years, she replied, There is not a thing that comes to mind. After pausing for a moment, Harris said, I would maybe have handed the ice cream cone to a staffer before answering the Gaza question. <laughs> then after another beat, Kamala added, I also would have adopted one or two more untrainable killing dogs. <laughs> Louisiana Senator John Kennedy this week attacked Kamala Harris for daring to speak the word tampons at a time like this. The last couple of days, the vice president goes on some show called Call, call Her Daddy or Call Your Daddy or, or Who's call Your me daddy. daddy or something. <laughs> call Me Daddy. I like Who's Your Daddy better. Um, and, and, and among other things, she's talking about, uh, about, about tampons. You know, the people in Appalachia right now don't give a function about tampons. I, you have to remember that, just don't forget, women are women and men are people. <laughs> but it's part of the worldview. But, but also give him a break. He's from a generation of men who were taught to treat tampons like they were radioactive, but in a gay way. Like they come with period blood already on them. 
uh, to even when I like even I think even now if we, we still treat tampons like they're illicit. Uh, if men needed tampons, there'd be tampons everywhere. There'd also be blood everywhere. It would be a real mess, honestly. So it's, <laughs> so it's probably for the best that they don't, except for trans men who are trained as women, so they're fine. Anyway, Jews invented hurricanes. Or did they? <laughs> That's right, this week Marjorie Taylor Greene continued to spread the conspiracy theory that hurricanes are actually being directed by Democrats and or Jews, which is ridiculous. It's climate change and not a conspiracy causing this next superstorm, Hurricane Tova Feldstein. Oh no. <laughs> and right on the heels of Hurricane Shlomo. <laughs> Hurricane Shlomo. Can you believe the weather we're having? <laughs> You feel a draft? It's Hurricane Shlomo. Uh. <laughs> President Biden denounced MTG's dangerous delusions to the press. Now the claims are getting even more bizarre. Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a congresswoman of Georgia, is now saying the federal government is literally controlling the weather. We're controlling the weather. It's beyond ridiculous. It's got to stop. Moments like this, there are no red or blue states. Yes. In uh, our climate change future, there are no red states and blue states. There will only be dry states and wet states, and eventually fire states and flood states, and then, finally, just Michigan. <laughs> Florida Governor Ron DeSantis took a moment to denounce conspiracy theories. Be careful about the nonsense that just that gets circulated, and just know that the more titillating it is, the more likely somebody is making money off of it, uh, and, and they don't really give a damn about the well-being and safety of the people that are actually in the eye of this storm. Added the governor, this applies to hurricane-related posts only. Woke liberal math teachers are trying to turn your children trans for pedophile reasons. <laughs> DeSantis' words were carefully chosen to leave room for interpretation, specifically the interpretation that he's still a prick, because DeSantis' <laughs> spokesperson, Christine Pushaw, warned against online misinformation while continuing to disparage actual news outlets, writing, if you wouldn't believe a New York Times story based solely on anonymous sources, and I wouldn't, you shouldn't believe engagement-based posts like these that make outlandish claims without evidence. Yeah, man, totally. The New York Times reporting on your disaster of a campaign and Patriot 69 posting an AI-rendered image of Donald Trump putting sandbags around a church are the same thing. You can't trust the Times. You can't trust the tweets. You can only trust me, Christine Pashaw, a professional liar. <laughs> Pashaw. It's a cool name. <laughs> Meanwhile, according to a new book by Bob Woodward, that comes out next week, Donald Trump secretly sent Russian President Vladimir Putin a supply of COVID tests for his personal use in 2020 as the U.S. struggled with a test shortage. Interesting. So Trump's love language is gifts. <laughs> Putin told, yeah, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Putin told Trump to keep quiet, saying, I don't want you to, this is real, I don't want you to tell anybody because people will get mad at you, not me. Weird, that's exactly what I told Tommy the one time we kissed, I mean didn't kiss. <laughs> Leave this in. <laughs> Trump has also reportedly kept in touch with Putin after leaving the White House, in one instance ordering an aide away from his Mar-a-Lago office in early 2024 so that he could talk to him on the phone. And yet, you hang up first. <laughs> Overall, it was a week of nonstop bizarre Trump ramblings. Here's the former president at a rally in Scranton, Pennsylvania on Wednesday, imagining one of his supporters blowing up in a car accident. They want to go now hydrogen. They want a hydrogen car. You know what the problem is? When they blow up, you are unrecognizable. If this beautiful young woman is in the car, drive it, and the hydrogen car, if it blows up, you are unrecognized. You, you with a nice Trump sign. Is that Trump? Stand up. Let me say. Oh, I like her. I like her. I will not allow her to go into a hydrogen car. The race is tied. Can I get in the car? I'd like, I'd like to get in the car. I want in on that car. While visiting the Detroit Economic Club, Donald Trump had this to say about the price of consumer goods. The word grocery, you know, it's sort of simple word, but it sort of means like everything you eat. The stomach is speaking. It always does. And uh, I have more complaints about that. Bacon. <laughs> he sounds like an unprepared best man giving a speech at a grocery store's wedding. <laughs> 
Trump issued this threat about his opponent. Our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president. He's in Detroit. <laughs> Everywhere we'll have horrible pizza. We'll constantly have to pay homage to Motown, which we admire, but it doesn't have to be your thing. I was talking about Motown. Trump had this to say about California. In California, you have brownouts and blackouts every week. And blackouts, I mean, the place is stone cold, broke, no electricity. So you have blackouts, brownouts all the time. What an asshole. He has no idea what living in California is like. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we did it. We did the bit. Yeah. Also in Detroit, Trump recalled the life advice he gave his children. No drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. And they'd go out and uh, Ivanka would say, Dad, stop telling me that. I said, I'm going to tell it to you every time I see you. I'm going to drive you wild with it. <laughs> there will now be a one-hour intermission so that we can all... <laughs> Go home and take a shower. <laughs> now we're going to play a game called The Six Degrees of Trump Family Cocaine, and we'll all name the people we know who have done cocaine with those children. <laughs> Anybody want to go first? <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump will hold a rally in Coachella this Saturday for reasons that remain politically unclear. I hope he plays hot to go. Uh, Harris... <laughs> not going to play hunt again. A Harris campaign spokesperson said, oh no, this is extremely concerning for our campaign. Please do not go to Coachella, California, 24 days before the election. Whatever gay guy they have peddling the generator on that catty bitch machine, <laughs> we salute you. Meanwhile, Trump supporters are not just getting scammed by his rallies. Some are reporting high dollar scams on True Social as grifters run rampant on Trump's social media platform. Amazingly, this is not about the $100,000 watches Trump is selling, or the crypto trading cards Trump is selling, or the Bibles Trump is selling. According to FTC complaints obtained by Gizmodo, elderly truth social users have fallen victim to grifters losing tens of thousands of dollars before realizing they're scammed. As a Donald Trump supporter, you've marked yourself as scammable. You're on the Paris subway asking people in English how to get to Notre Dame, and you're pronouncing it Notre Dame. <laughs> you're taking out your wallet to buy a fake Prada bag in Italy, and your euros are all just falling on the ground. Said one elderly victim, I'm ruined, I'm ruined, to think I was once the mayor of New York. <laughs> During oral arguments on Tuesday, the Supreme Court seemed likely to uphold a Biden administration rule that requires background checks, serial numbers, and sale records for ghost guns, but no ruling as of yet on the ability to purchase bullets. <laughs> Spooky. Chief Justice Roberts seems skeptical of manufacturers' arguments that they shouldn't have to comply with gun regulations because ghost guns are usually assembled at home and marketed to hobbyists. Said Roberts, this is a real quote, I mean, drilling a hole or two, I would think, doesn't give the same sort of reward that you get from working on your car on the weekends. <laughs> About building a gun in your house. Ah, yes, why else would someone buy a kit to build an unregistered, untraceable gun but for the love of crafting? <laughs> Justice Samuel Alito, on the other hand, questioned whether ghost gun kits fall under the legal definition of a firearm, asking, and this is real, whether eggs, chopped ham, peppers, and onions would be considered a Western omelet. <laughs> hey, if you think about it, guns are kind of like omelets. Save it for Netflix as a joke, you fuck. Listen. When the lawyer representing gun owners and gun makers said no, because those ingredients could be used to make other things, Justice Amy Coney Barrett asked a follow-up, which is again real, would, you an would your answer change if you ordered it from HelloFresh and you got a kit and it was like turkey chili, but all of the ingredients are in the kit? As it happens, HelloFresh has a sister company that sells ghost gun kits called Goodbye Fresh. <laughs> These kits are about exploiting the loophole. It's obviously a loophole. Everybody knows it's a loophole. It's like building a latte in the Starbucks app instead of paying full price for the latte. I don't care what you call it, I'm drinking a latte. And they can try to close that loophole, but somebody's gonna get shot. <laughs> 
Speaking of situations that have gotten out of hand, a woman in Washington state called the police last week when she was unable to get into her home because there were about 100 raccoons outside demanding food. Soon after, two squad cars arrived, but sure enough, they were just full of more raccoons. <laughs> the woman told authorities that she'd started feeding raccoons about 35 years ago and had no issues until six weeks ago when the raccoon population exploded. Also, by the way, she's lying. <laughs> just admit it, lady. The problem didn't suddenly emerge slowly, day by day, week by week, year by year. You raised a raccoon army. <laughs> You're embarrassed that it now has gotten to the point where you need help, but that didn't happen in the last six weeks. You've been feeding raccoons for 35 years. You're just, ha the problem is not sudden, it's a problem, and you're right to call the authorities, but it didn't sneak up on you. This reminds me of when on Hoarders, a show that I used to watch secretly, <laughs> the doctor would go into a house with shoulder high garbage and a cat skeleton under a rotten jack-o-lantern, and, and the doctor would ask the person what happened, and the hoarder would say, it's been a really busy spring. And finally, <laughs> Ethel Kennedy, wife of the late Robert F. Kennedy and mother to RFK Jr., died at the age of 96. When reached for comment, RFK Jr. expressed sadness that she did not live long enough to see him become president. Then he sighed, fired up his trusty chainsaw, and said, now let's get decapitating. <laughs> in other news, in other news, <laughs> an old woman's skeleton has been found in Central Park. That, what the fuck? Damn it. Is that you, Ethel? All right. <laughs>